am your host, Denny Van. I want to give a quick announcement before we get into today's topic to let you know I am going to be giving a workshop and a presentation this June for the American Dowsers Society at Plymouth University in New Hampshire, and then that's going to be this June. So I'll be leaving some information in the description as well. So I'd love to see you there. So now on to today's topic. Today I want to talk about happiness. I get asked some basic questions like, what is this? What is spirit? What does it mean to be spiritual? What is happiness? So if we look up the word happiness, We'll get a noun and it means the state of being happy. So you know I'm all about states, right? So as a master hypnotist, our consciousness goes through various states all day long. So the dictionary says it's a state of being happy. How most of us know happiness is as a verb. For example, our outer experience we want someone to make us happy. If you do these things, therefore I'll be happy and then I'll give my love to you. So we kind of withhold until they make us happy and then we give love and then we're all too often very happy to withhold again once they don't make us happy. So as we can see, this is a verb. This is a kind of behavioral dance that we do and we call it make me happy. <laughs> so this is a very superficial happiness and this is really not the kind of happiness we want to pursue. Wait for the other person to make us happy because what's on the other side of that? They're going to disappoint us. So what we want to do is create a space of happiness. So if we look at this, we see, all right, there's one experience that is a noun. It's the state of being happy. But what I've experienced pretty much my whole life is the verb, make me happy, therefore I'll make you happy. <laughs> so this is an outer experience. It is the verb. What we're talking about is the noun. How do we get into the state of being happy? And I can tell you one thing, and you may agree with me or maybe not, that depending for it on others is asking for disappointment. So this kind, if you've experienced that kind of happiness, you make me happy and then the happiness is gone and you can't get it back. It's not the same. You know, all of these spiraling things that begin to happen when we put our dependency on someone else to make us happy. And if you really think about it, it's very narcissistic, but we're taught this, right? This is how a lot of our parents might model. We might witness our parents or other people who are in relationship, you know, give them the silent treatment kind of thing to show them that they're unhappy rather than just communicating and say, hey, these are my needs and this is what I need to happen and what's going on here and how can I meet your needs and that kind of communication. Instead, we hold back and probably make things up in our head, right? Who's guilty of that? We might make things up in our head about the story of whatever that situation that suddenly made you unhappy. So we're putting control in something or someone else to make us happy. And I'm here to say that if we can make a shift to putting ourselves, starting with me, because, you know, uh, if I don't do it <laughs> and yet teach it, you want to be able to find this in yourself. I do it. Even though there's all kinds of things happening in the background, my mind will start to go there and I can feel the pull of being unhappy with the situation. And it takes work, awareness, courage to come back to center and say, all right, who's responsible for my happiness? Oh, right, I am. <laughs> yeah, I can't blame that situation for me not being happy in this moment because that situation's only in my head right now, right? It's not really here in the here and now. So once I make that little shift and find your tools, find the ways that you 
catch yourself in this state of being happy. It's a state of being. Because once we put our happiness in someone else's responsibility, our consciousness has been hijacked, right? So now somebody else is now responsible for our state of being. Now that is pretty narcissistic and I'm guilty of it. So I was taught this and I had to provide my being's experiences with the tools as things started to come up because things start to come up based on our 3D realm and what's happening in our world is triggering stuff. It's like, hey, we just want peace. Hey, we just want happiness. Hey, I just want to be able to run my business without without all the other mandates, you know, and all that other stuff. I just want to be able to do my thing. And yet, we're finding ourselves in a state of not being happy and maybe blaming those outward things and outward expectations for our own unhappiness. So if we can take just a moment to become aware of when you're in a state where no one can give or take your happiness away, that you are happiness. You're in the state of happiness. And what does this require? Self-hypnosis is the number one way to really get yourself in this state. And what I'm seeing in um, a lot of people is a dependency on these listening to, you know, various music or various guided meditations. These things are great to guide you into this state. But once you're in this state, you don't need those things anymore. Now you yourself are now the noun of the state of being happy. And you can put yourself in this state regardless of what's happening in your 3D realm. Because remember, what's happening in the 3D realm has to play out. And we choose whether or not we're going to feed it our most precious gift, our focus, awareness, and attention, or not. Either way, it still has to play out. And no, it's not spiritual bypassing. It actually, it's spiritual containment. You're containing your energy to whatever it is that's playing out rather than keeping the cycle going. Because sometimes you got to like, let it go by so that it stops the domino effect kind of thing. So if you find that you are depending on other people to make you happy, you're the domino. And as soon as you say, you're not making me happy, it goes around and it kicks you in the ass. So if you've experienced this, I want to hear from you. I definitely want to hear from you. And what is happiness? What does it mean to you? How do you experience happiness in your life? How were you brought up to experience happiness? What were your parents or your um, siblings or your environment? How did your environment teach you happiness? And can I take your happiness away? Because if I can, your consciousness has been hijacked. If I can't, that is just pure awesomeness. So again, I want to hear from you. I want to hear what you like. I want to hear what you would like more of. And in the meantime, hit me up with information about New Hampshire. That's happening in June. And um, I look forward to the next episode. And keep being amazing.